Parasites are the second group of natural enemy commandos doing battle for the farmer. Many parasites in cotton are either flies or tiny wasps. Parasites are different from predators in that parasites require only one host for development. Also, while predators attack many different kinds of insects, parasites usually zero in on only one species of pest. A tiny parasite with the very long name of Lysiphlebus testicipes attacks the cotton aphid. This tiny black wasp lays her egg inside the victim with her specialized stinger. The egg hatches into a grub which feeds inside the living aphid. In about a week, the aphid dies, swells up, and turns brown. The swollen aphid is called a mummy. Soon the adult wasp cuts a hole in the mummy and emerges to repeat the cycle. The mini wasps, like most parasites, are hard to see, but the presence of mummies in aphid colonies alerts the grower that parasites are patrolling the area. Bullworms, budworms, armyworms, and other caterpillars are attacked by other, larger parasitic wasps. These wasps are not commonly seen in the field. They can be best detected by collecting larvae and rearing them to determine if a parasite emerges. Pathogens or diseases form our last allied battalion. Bacteria, fungi, and viruses can inflict great harm by causing vast epidemics in the pest population. Aphids are sometimes hit by the fungal disease called neozygitis. The fungus grows inside the aphid, which dies in three to four days. Aphids killed by this disease can be recognized in the colony by a gray fuzzy mold covering their bodies. This fungus sometimes spreads rapidly across the field, massacring the aphid population. Caterpillars are sometimes killed by a virus called nuclear polyhydrosis virus, or NPV. Infected caterpillars feed less, become sluggish, and die in 5 to 12 days. Dead caterpillars hang from leaf tips and are easily broken open, spilling virus-contaminated liquid onto leaves, which other caterpillars contact. Now that we have met our insect allies, how can they be mustered for further service in the war against insect pests? This can be done using a three-part battle plan. First, natural enemies can be imported from other countries into the U.S. to combat a specific pest. Several natural enemy warriors have been imported from Mexico, the native home of the boll weevil. Unfortunately, none survive to give much control. Some natural enemies are mass-reared or collected and sold for release. Lady beetles and tiny trichogramma wasps are sometimes promoted for use in cotton. Unfortunately, research shows these releases give little benefit because they're too expensive at effective levels. Conserving natural enemies already present in the cotton field offers the greatest biological control potential. These natural enemies are entrenched and well adapted to the field. They just need a little help. Natural enemies can be conserved by minimizing insecticides and by using insecticides that are effective against the pest but less toxic to natural enemies. Another important aspect of conservation is habitat surrounding cotton. Many important natural enemies like lady beetles, spiders and pirate bugs found in cotton are also found in surrounding fields. Sorghum, for example, planted near cotton, provides a source of natural enemies. Also, use of insecticides only when necessary in sorghum can preserve this source of natural enemies. To fully appreciate how well your allies are doing, it's necessary to take a head count every now and then. As with cotton pests, scouting the field to find out how many natural enemies are present can help farmers make better pest management decisions. But how can insects as secretive as your allies be counted? Simply looking at a plant is a good way to find evidence of parasites such as aphid mummies and cotija cocoons. However, you'll miss many of the important predators because they're so small or hidden. Others, like spiders, run before being seen. It's easy to see why visual inspection is not very reliable for sampling predators. The beet bucket method is much better. 
All that's needed is a clean white five gallon plastic bucket and a little stealth. Carefully approach the plant to be sampled, but don't let your shadow fall across it. Grasp the plant near its base and quickly bend it into the bucket. Beat the plant against the side of the bucket eight to ten times. This should shake any predators loose from the plant. Remove the plant and you can easily see the predators against the white sides of the bucket. The bucket is deep enough to let you see your allies before they escape. Record your findings, release your catch, and head for the next plant. We hope you now have a better appreciation of biological insect control in cotton using natural enemies as allies. Remember that biological control allies include three battalions, predators, parasites, and pathogens. Their conservation is an increasingly important part of cotton pest management. You have learned to identify many of the important natural enemies in our battleground foray. You've even learned to use a beet bucket to census your frontline warriors. But there is still much to be learned about natural enemies. Since this business of trying to save good bugs so they can do away with bad bugs is relatively new, research is still needed to determine how we can use natural enemies more effectively against cotton pests. We also must learn how natural enemies spend the winter and how numbers in cotton can be increased. As these answers surface, we can begin to turn the fight over to those who do it best, our allies, the natural enemies. If you would like to learn more about using biological controls in cotton, contact your Texas Agricultural Extension Service County Extension Agent. They can provide publications and advice to help you win the fight against cotton pest. You can also visit us on the internet at the address on the screen.